All right, over the past year, we've seen a pretty big spike in creator laptops. So devices that are geared towards creative work. And we've seen stuff from like Intel, Nvidia, and a whole bunch of laptop manufacturers that's pushing that market to just, you know, selling products to people that are interested in devices for creative work. So if you're like an artist or a video editor or just anything that works with stuff, making stuff, this video is for you. So I've made this kind of buyer's guide for people that are interested in one of those devices. And it's kind of a guide to figure out what you should look for, what you should avoid, just so you don't get bamboozled into the whole marketing thing. Cause there is a lot of marketing fluff in this space right now. So I'm just gonna address the, the first point of, this is an age old debate of MacBooks versus Windows laptops. And over the past couple of years, there's been a very clear and obvious winner when it came to performance with Adobe products, particularly Adobe Premiere. Windows laptops were just two or three times better than MacBooks. Like forget about price and value and all that stuff, like just performance wise, these things just crushed Apple's MacBooks. But recently in like the spring of 2019, Adobe updated their software to the point where Apple's top of the line MacBooks are on par or just very equivalent in performance to the top of the line Windows laptops. Forget about like the potential with keyboard errors and stuff like that. I'm just talking about performance. This is like the Apple platform is a very viable platform for people that are interested in performance with Adobe's products as of right now. It wasn't the case last year, but 2019 summer, you're good. Okay, we'll get into performance and stuff later. I'm gonna start with screens because this is something that I think is, often overlooked with kind of the generic laptop review. When you talk about content creation, a lot of people are interested in a screen that can display colors accurately to an industry standard. And the truth is every single laptop here, every single laptop that I've ever had with has an imperfect color profile. They're never gonna be as good as like a professional calibrated screen. Now I wanna talk about these new OLED panels that are coming into the laptop space. They're all made by Samsung and a lot of manufacturers are marketing these panels as like content creator screens for these devices. And I have an issue with that. The Samsung OLED panel is an amazing screen. It's bright, it's colorful, it's very vibrant, but I do not consider them to be good for content creation. There's a couple of reasons why. They're very difficult to calibrate, like super hard to do it right. One company does it properly, like the Aero 15 from Gigabyte, their new one, they run an OLED and it's calibrated well. They lower their brightness to do it properly. But every other laptop manufacturer that I've seen with an OLED panel has worse color accuracy than I thought they would, considering how these screens are marketed towards creative workflows. Now, another thing, OLED panels use PWM to control the brightness levels. And it's not something that's gonna affect everyone, but if you're sensitive to flicker and stuff, like if you are bothered by fluorescent lights and how they flicker, the PWM on these OLED panels can give you some kind of eye strain. Point being, I don't think OLED panels are the optimal choice when it comes to content creation. There are some really good IPS screens on the market right now. The 15 inch MacBook Pro, great screen, bright, color accurate. The two that I would recommend in terms of like the best screens from Windows laptops right now, the Acer Concept D uses the same panel as the older Gigabyte Aero 15. They both use a 4K IPS panel, excellent color accuracy and bright. But another thing to keep in mind is that a lot of the gaming laptops right now have these 1080p high refresh screens and they're surprisingly good for color accurate work. Like they're not great, they're good, but you just wouldn't expect a gaming screen to be good at all because often they haven't been in the past. The Razer Blade 15, like this is a 2018 model, has a very usable screen for color accurate work once you calibrate it. But the takeaway here is that you don't have to buy an OLED screen for sure. And even some of the older devices, like they're great, especially some of the 4K IPS panels. They are very good for color accurate work. Um, okay. Next thing, let's talk about pricing and value. When you purchase a creator laptop or a laptop for creative work, there's kind of two main things you wanna keep in mind, the CPU and the GPU. You want to pick up, if you can afford it, a six core CPU. That's basically the number of cores that are in your processing unit of your laptop. You don't need the 2019 versions. The 2018 versions are already great. The GPU, like the graphical chip inside your laptop, is a much more complicated decision. It's really dependent on what you do for your creative work. 
if you're like a Photoshop user or an Adobe Premiere user, you don't need anything super powerful. Like the difference between the 1060 and the top of line RTX 2080 is very slight when it comes to a lot of photo and video work. Now, MacBook users have a GPU option at the top end of a Vega GPU, and that graphics card is quite a bit more capable than their 560 or 560X. If you can afford it and you're one of the people that really want to use Mac for your creative stuff, I would recommend, if you can afford it, to get that Vega option. It is a it is a worthwhile upgrade. Okay, I think that wraps it up for the GPUs. Um, RAM, okay. This is again, very dependent on what you do, but for the most part, 16 gigs is good enough, but there are a lot of applications that can take advantage of 32 at this point. So if you're a Photoshop user and your projects are like six, 700 megs, like once you get into bigger projects, the extra RAM is nice. And the same thing goes for video editing. I output 4K videos and I can definitely benefit from 32 gigs of RAM instead of 16. But that's basically the main hardware decisions. Like you just gotta figure out what you're doing, what you need and go off of that. Okay, so I wanna talk about performance a little bit. Here's a chart that has playback and render performance for a few different hardware configurations. The MacBook performance is finally on par with Windows laptops, which is really nice to see. Uh, but you also notice that the GPU choice is really not all that important. As long as you have something that's pretty good, you're gonna be great. You really don't need the top of the line RTX hardware when it comes to Adobe's software. So I'm gonna finish this video with just some talking points of some of the devices I have here. Like clearly these are not the, like the only options you have out there when it comes to creative laptops, but these are ones that are kind of special or unique in some sense. Uh, the Asus ZenBook Pro Duo, I've done a review on this thing. It's the one with two screens, like the 4K screen up top and then the kind of touch screen on the bottom. It's neat. It's something that I think if you can fit into your workflow can be really useful for some creative professionals, but uh, just kind of, if you, if you don't know what it is, definitely check that thing out. Uh, the Aero 15, if you're looking for that OLED experience, this is the best one in my opinion. Aero 15, they've done it right from Gigabyte. Uh, one really neat one is the Acer Concept D. Like this is a fully white laptop. I think they did a really good job with the aesthetics of it. And of the Windows laptops, I would say this has the best screen. I actually really like this device on the whole. Uh, Razer Blade 15, if you're looking for a gaming laptop that can double as a creative laptop, like without you know messing around with different screens and stuff, check this one out. XPS 15, it's always been like a solid overall device because it has an SD card slot, but it doesn't have a particularly powerful GPU and there's some thermal limitations with this chassis. Uh, the MacBooks, we've seen Adobe's done some great work with their software. These things perform way better than they ever did before. One thing that's actually interesting that some people may not be aware of, when it comes to any of these devices, any of the Windows devices, if they're running off of battery power, like if you have to disconnect the AC adapter and run off of battery power, they don't perform as well as they would if they were plugged up. MacBooks are different. They don't have as strong of a power draw, so these can run off of the battery with the exact same kind of performance as they would if it was plugged up. So that's just something to keep in mind, like not everyone knows that. But that basically wraps up this video. I hope this was helpful, hope this was useful. Just keep in mind, like, there's a lot of marketing around this space, you know, duck and dodge the dumb stuff and focus on the stuff that's important. Okay, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thumbs if you liked it, subs if you loved it. See you guys next time.